Okay, this is Intro to Fountain Pens as Drawing Tools Part 2. Um, this is the chart that I used in Part 1 to illustrate the difference between a permanent ink, like the Diatromance Document Black, the Noodler's Heart of Darkness Bulletproof ink, and these are two different water-soluble inks. That This one happened to be Diamine Ancient Copper, and this was a J. Urban Rouge Hematite. Now, I use the same color orange for all of these, the color of watercolor that I put over this was influenced by the ink itself. So you can see where a water soluble ink will actually change the color of the paint you're using. So that's something to think about in a minute when I go back and show you some of these drawings that I've done with different kinds of ink. So the first drawing that I'm going to show you is just on the first page of the book or second page of the book. This is like a little tree and I did the watercolor sketch first and then I outlined this with the, um, it's called Noodler's Navajo Turquoise. And um, so that's kind of how I got the crisp lines. And this is a water-soluble ink, and I outlined it. And then I dabbed, like, the leaves actually, some of the color in each one of these individual little leaves that you're looking at on this tree, some of the color in the leaves actually came from the ink itself. So... I used a water brush, I think, to go over those to produce that color. So that was that was a pretty fun thing to do with a water-soluble ink. Okay, so the next example I'm going to give you here is, whoops, let's, let's use one of these tabs. This is, oh, these are so frustrating. They're sticking together. Ugh. All right, this was the next one I wanted to show you. This is the Noodler's Heart of Darkness, which is a bulletproof ink. And this is just like a quick kind of scene I did from my head, like sketching. I don't remember where I was or what I was doing or why I did it this way. But I used a, I think I used a fairly heavy nib, like a, a calligraphy nib. And um, when I painted over that with watercolor, because this was the Noodler's Heart of Darkness, you definitely got this kind of like black sort of thing happening. Um in the areas where there was darker ink drawing. So that's just something to think about. If you actually color in with your inks or like texture a road like I did here, the smearing can get to the point where it's actually another color in and of itself. And we have like smoke coming up here. So I was hoping kind of like these darker areas almost look like, like the smoke from cook fires or whatever. But uh, whoops. So this next one here, this is also a water-soluble ink. I believe this is, um, this is this ink I used here, the Diamine Ancient Copper water-soluble ink. And this is a hand that I sketched um, over top of just some stuff that I gessoed on. So the neat thing about this water-soluble ink is I went over it with a water brush and I was able to produce this really beautiful kind of like depth of color in there. Um, and then I waited for it to dry and I was able to crisp up the lines again. So I just basically did like two layers of that. And that's how you might use, it is one way to use a water soluble ink like the Diamine Ancient Copper. So next, next we have that one. Ah, okay. So this is my ancient elderly dog um, before he passed away and I did this with I, it's an ink called Noodler's Rome is Burning and it's extremely water soluble and it produces this lovely when you go over it with a water brush you get this lovely gradation of tone and it's just magical I, I really love the way that so this is again it's a water soluble ink and it produces a certain effect if you continue, if you want to line underneath something after you paint over it with water, don't use this ink. Use this ink only when you want to wash or a tone and maybe you can add line afterwards or you can kind of like adjust the thickness of the line with a, like a barely damp brush or something like that. So it's something to think about, but it does, it is lovely and it does have a lovely effect. Okay, so the next, this is the Diatromenis Document Black, and it's also another permanent ink by Pilot. Or, yeah, it's a Pentel, this is a Pentel cartridge pen, and um, it's a brush pen, 
I think I did some of the thicker lines in this drawing with this like very uh, fine tipped brush pen, which is also like a permanent ink. So some of these thicker lines here on the edges of this thing. And then for the finer lines in there, I used um, the trusty Waterman Phileas with the uh, Diatremenis Document Black. So you can see Diatremenis Document Black being a permanent ink, how you get that richness of color right over top of that black ink. So in areas like this pen here, where I kind of went over that, and even though this is not a completely translucent watercolor, somewhat opaque, nothing smeared, everything is kind of crisp and, and nice. So that was that is one way that you can use a permanent ink like the Diatremenis and it, it continues to get all of the spectrum of color on top of that ink without the ink moving at all. Very nice. Okay. Um, what else do we have here? I think that's it. That's all my examples of, I did have one more I wanted to show you. Oh yeah, this one, this is, um, this is just using a permanent ink to sketch over pencil. And there again, it created this like nice crisp line. E even if you had sweaty hands and you ran your hand over it, nothing would happen. Once a permanent ink is dry, it is in place forever. At least the Diatremenis document black is. I don't know about other permanent inks, but this one is, is very nice that way. So I could now paint this with a watercolor brush, which I'm eventually going to do. Like I consider this thing unfinished. I could paint over this and this would not blend into the paint. So I hope this was useful, like in terms of giving you some direction as far as how to use fountain pens in your sketchbooks. If you have any questions, please ask me below and I will be happy to produce another video addressing those. And you all have a nice day.